Hey creative crowd, how are you doing? Today I'm gonna do a top six new functions in the 1.7 update of Affinity Photo. I did a live stream about three hours long with all of the different new functions. You can check that out. I will link it in the video description. Today I make a super short version for you with the top things that you should know and try out because it's super powerful and really interesting. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Super important. Thank you very much, guys. And let's get started. So the first thing that I want to show you today is, you know, in my tutorials, I often work with pictures from Unsplash and also from Pixbay. And now this is included in Affinity Photo right in the software. It's so powerful and makes your workflow so much quicker. And you can find it over here where you usually have your layers, effects, styles, and now it says stock. So you click on the stock tab and there you can select between three different services. So you have Unsplash, you have Paxels, and then you have Pixbay. Unsplash has very high quality pictures from professional photographers that you can use for free, even for commercial users. So that's really amazing. So you go on this stock um, tab and just type in cat, for example, there we go. And you can have a cute cat picture that you just drag into your image like that. There we have the cute cat. So you can see super easy workflow. You can see we had a little pop up with the information about the photographer and also about the resolution of the image. On Unsplash, you only have images. On Pixbay, you also have graphic and vector files. So I could, for example, go in here and type Twitter um, and then I get one second, Twitter, I get different icon designs if I want to. For example, if I want to have this cute bird here, I can have the bird. I just drag him over here and I can put him right next to the cat. There we go and done. So if you want to create social media posts and have all this kind of cool stuff in there, or you want to make a new, a nice card for your mom or for your father on Father's Day and send it per email, you can do that super easy, super fast now with the integration of these stock services. And like I said, you can use all of these files for completely free. So that's super amazing. Let's go on to the next top feature that we have. And this is HSL adjustment, which is now also very powerful, a little bit complicated to use, but it can be powerful. So I go in here to unsplash and search for a car picture. For example, now I have the red car here. Let's make this picture a little bit bigger so it covers the image. There we go. And now if I want to resize that, uh, what you would do usually is you go down here to adjustment layers and select the HSL adjustment. And usually you can see now we have this donut in the middle with the rainbow colors. And usually what it would do is it would uh, adjust all of the image. This is not what you want to do. And you would have to create a mask for that. Um, so what you can do now is you have these color kind call of points color reservoirs that you can use you select one and now you can also see that the color picker is active so you click on that and then click on the car color so we have this red here and now when i move my hue shift around you can see that this mainly only influences the car so this can be super useful it works best and this is why i say it's a bit complicated it works best with things that have a very defined color so if you have a person in there and then the person has a red or an orange dress there is also orange and red values in the skin of the person so it's kind of hard to isolate you can isolate it a little bit for example you can see here in the background for example um the the yellow stripes are also turning their color because there's a little bit of red in there, a little bit of orange. And this is what these four points do that we see on the side here in our little color donut. Um, so in the middle of these four points is the color we actually selected. And then we have four outer points and they work like a little bit of a gradient, like a border that goes outside. So if you move in this outer point, you can see here that 
less of other colors of um, bordering colors are influenced by that and you can really um, kind of uh, tune this down to the actual uh, color of the car if you go too close you tap into the color of the car but you can see what I mean by it's a little bit complicated to use because um, it's changing the color of the car but still here in the background we have a little bit of value so I think most of the time you still would use kind of a mask uh, to mask out other areas but it makes it a little bit easier to change the color of objects you can see here we can turn the color of the car into anything we want now and it's super easy let's reduce the saturation a little bit and it looks realistic so that's very nice probably still use a mask with it to be on the safe side but it makes things a lot easier and especially if you have flat designs um, like vectors or a comic you recolor something then uh, this will snap to just one color so it's a lot easier all right let's go on to the next part and this is brushes and brushes are now insanely powerful and uh, like a thousand times more useful uh, not only in the way you can create brushes but also in the way you can combine brushes so let's look at that real quick and of course I'm going to do a little bit of self-advertisement why not uh, because as you know I have created my own brush pack that you can download I will link it also in the video description we have a free sample of I think seven brushes and then there is also premium versions if you want you can buy them you don't have to of course uh, so let's select one of my brushes brushes here and I will as already is uh, pink selected as a color let's select my brush and I will draw onto a pixel layer let's make the brush a little bit bigger uh, like this and you can see here I have these beautiful stars that are now my brush on the screen and what I could do now is I can uh, let's undo this real quick when I click up here on more we usually have these all these kind of settings here to influence the brush and also the brush textures and but what you can do now is we have a new tab it's called sub brushes and in the sub brush tab you can do three different things you can add a basic round brush then you can now also adjust of course with all these kind of settings you can add a bitmap and a bitmap is the texture of the brush so the nozzle in this case it would be the stars and you can add more of those in different brush variations or the easiest way is you just drag over another brush so for example from my brush pack I drag over the hard brushes and you can see instantly I have hearts in there now too you can see now we have stars and hearts at the same time so this is super powerful and of course you can still adjust the sub brushes so select the sub brush and down here it says edit and this opens a new window it tells you it's a sub brush editor so you know it's not the main brush you are adjusting and um, you still have the same settings in here so each of the brushes you can really adjust in detail individually one thing to point out is that you can't go bigger than the main size of your main brush so the sub brushes are limited by the size that you set for your main brush of course because that's the main size of all the brushes including the sub brushes but you can see this is super super powerful to use um, so okay that was that and another thing for brushes that's also very useful is you can now rotate the brushes by use of your arrow keys on your keyboard that makes it so very fast to work and this is especially interesting when you work with texture brushes for example here I have a cloud brush let's make this really big and you can see here now I have a cloud so let's click once and it's a pink cloud at the moment but that doesn't matter too much but what I can do now is when I hover with my brush over the pixel layer I can use my arrow keys to rotate the brush in any direction and completely once around 360 degrees uh, I can do that and this makes it super easy and super fun to use these brushes now and for example you can now make a text out of clouds by putting it in the right angle in the right position and right with clouds for example in the sky so you can do really cool stuff 
I will do basically uh, also a tutorial about how to do that in one of my next videos. Okay, let's go on because we have other stuff to talk about. One more thing, which is the next uh, tip. This is the fourth one is symmetry. For this, I will go back to a basic brush so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Let's delete everything that we have here. And symmetry means that the brush is repeating what you're doing. So um, you can see here I can draw. Okay, this is a little bit too small. Maybe take the 16. There we go. Okay, this is big enough. So you can see I can draw normally with my mouse on my canvas. But now I have symmetry up here. You can see in my brush settings when I have the brush tool selected, it says symmetry. So I have a line here. In this case, it's rotated because I rotated it before. Maybe let's rotate that back to original value and set it to center. Is it? Well, Let's put it somewhere here. Okay, good. So now if I move it, you can see suddenly two brushes are painting on my screen and they are in symmetry with each other. So that's super nice. And you can go from one up to 16 in here. And with 16, you can create these kind of really beautiful mantras in here. So with just moving around your mouse a little bit and going crazy with your mouse, you can create really interesting uh, designs. And by the way, what you have seen right now is that I accidentally clicked on the line and instead of painting, I rotated the line. You can um, uh, be safe of that. You can stop that basically by locking it. So you have up here, you have a point that says lock. If you click the lock, I can no longer click on the line. And the use of that, of course, is let's create here a little design like this. And then I unlock it and now I can move this over and create a little design over here. And then I move this over here and create a little design over there. So you can see in seconds you can create a lot of really fun designs. And this has another function, so we're not even done yet with that because it also has the mirror function. And to explain that, I go back to a symmetry of one. So watch what happens. When I go from left to right, the other brush goes from right to left. And when I go to the middle, the other brush follows me to the middle. And when I use mirror, instead of symmetry, I mean, it's still a symmetry, but it's this mirror symmetry. It's uh, when I go from left to right, the other one also goes from left to right as would happen in a mirror. And when I go closer to the mirror, it comes closer. So it's a, just a different kind of symmetry that you can use um, that basically mirrors it instead of being the classic symmetry. I don't know. You know what I mean. Okay, let's go on to the next point. The next point is histories, actually. Um, and history is really interesting. I don't know even if you knew that feature in Affinity Photo. Um, down here where it says Navigator, Transform, History and Channels, you have this History tab. I will drag it out so you can see what's going on a little bit clearer. And there's two super important updates here. The first one is that when I click here on the three lines, I can turn off and on advanced. And if I turn on advanced as I had, you can see that I now have a preview of every step in the history of what I have done. So you can see here we have the cat and the bird again. There we have the car again. There is my starting point with the start screen, with my text, all this kind of stuff that was happening is in here and I can go back to any of these points. So I can click here and it should come back. There it is, you can see. Now my drawing is back and when I go back here, the car is back and here we have the cat and then we can also bring back the bird. Um, yeah, there's the bird, there we go. So you can see you can go back and forth any way you want. Uh, but the big difference now is you have now alternative histories and that means Every time you use the undo function on your computer, it creates a new version of the history. And this is, uh, you can see this by the symbol down here, these three dots with the two lines uh, symbolizing a new timeline basically in your history. And before, when you would go back and then do something new, it would 
delete all of the other points and only save the new points. But now it saves the new points, but also keeps the old points. So if you go back and change something, but don't like the changes, you can go to your alternative history by clicking on this symbol. So you cycle through the different futures, as it says here, and you can go back to the other version. So that's extremely powerful, very, very useful, and you are a lot safer from losing uh, your steps, losing what you have done in your file. Okay, um, let's go back to what we had here. Um, I can delete this and we have our last point and this is also super powerful. Actually, I want to add two more points because this one is also super powerful. This one is about the layers and that is, you can see here I have these bigger thumbnails and this is a new feature here and this is super useful if you have a higher screen resolution or your eyesight isn't that good anymore. Um, bigger thumbnails really help you with that. and. To have the bigger thumbnails, you go here to the three lines and you can select between the small thumbnails, the medium thumbnails and the large thumbnails. And another thing that is super useful is you can now color code your layers. So let's go to the small thumbnail so we see more layers at the same time. And when you right click on layer, you can see on the lowest part of this long list, you now have these colors here. And I would say, come up with a concept that you like. You can say, for example, red is all my pixel layers and yellow is all my vector layers and blue is all my text layers. And so you right click and then you color code them. And you can see here that this is super easy and fast to do. And it gives you a very quick overview now on the color code on the right side, which layer is doing what. And this is why I would also suggest that you write down a little note and stick it to your screen, which color does what. So you have, uh, you train yourself on a certain color coding on a certain workflow and use it the same every time and so it's super easy if you work with a lot of layers next time you open the file you exactly know with just a, a glimpse on the layers which layer is doing what so that's super perfect and super useful okay and now we come to the last super useful feature that has been requested by a ton of different people and this is you can now save presets and what that means is when you go on file and new you would usually have the presets that Affinity Photo has included. So you have different kind of screen resolutions and then you have different kind of print sizes and all the kind of things. But now on the, on the lowest part, you have presets and you can set up all your own information in here. And that is super useful. So you can up, set up all the different social media formats that you mainly use, maybe uh, Facebook or YouTube, Instagram, also stuff for emails when you send your friends and family emails so you can set exactly the size and resolution that you want to have. And then you go in here to these three little lines and say create preset. And you can see it also says rename preset and delete preset. So you can really organize a list, name them in a way that you can recognize and understand. So really use titles that mean something to you and make your own list. And this makes the workflow so much faster. Really good feature. I'm really happy it's in there now. Um, yeah, so these are the top six new functions, actually seven because of the uh, layers. So I hope you like them, try them out and they are really fun. See you in the next tutorial. I will do, of course, tutorials about the new features to go a little bit more into depth of the different new functions and maybe also do a live stream about the new functions in Affinity Designer. But I will be on a vacation for a week, so this will come afterwards. Uh, with the live stream, my tutorials will come in between uh, because I will pre-record them. Have a nice time. See you soon. Thank you for watching my videos. And if you want to see a tutorial, suggest it in the comments. Thank you. Bye.